Hi, I'm Casey Morrison. I'm a PCI SIG member and a systems engineer at Astera Labs, and I'm here to talk about PCI Express retimers. One of the biggest challenges that people face with PCI Express 5.0 has to do with signal integrity. Um, and this is really twofold. There's uh, the challenge that data rates have quadrupled over the last two years. Uh, we went from 8 gigatransfers per second at PCI Express Gen 3 to 16 gigatransfers per second at Gen 4, and now we're at 32 gigatransfers per second with PCI Express Gen 5. And secondly, the reach requirements haven't really changed. I mean, servers haven't really gotten any smaller. Um, if you look at a server with all the heat sinks and dim slots that they have, it's very difficult to move the PCI Express connectors any closer to the processor than where they are. So really, these two things combined to make a difficult signal integrity situation, um, and the channel insertion loss is really increasing significantly. So the way to solve this, um, if you look at the breakdown of a channel insertion loss uh, budget, you've got basically 9 dB for the root complex package. You've got the system uh, board, which consumes some portion of the budget. Then you've got the connector and the adding card, which take up 1.5 and 9.5 and dB, respectively. That leaves you only 16 dB for the system board. And if you're using like a low loss uh, or a mid loss material, uh, that will easily exceed the 36 dB loss budget if you go beyond four to six inches. One way to solve this is to go to a lower insertion loss material, which uh, increases your PCB board cost. That will reduce your loss on the baseboard by about 20 to 30%, um, but it still may not be enough to get below the 36 dB budget. Uh, you can then go to an ultra low loss material, which again increases the cost of the system, but it reduces the baseboard loss by about 30 to 40%. And even then you may not uh, get below the 36 dB budget, uh, for example, if you have a multi-connector topology or a cabled topology, or if you've got more than 8 to 12 inches of trace, you'll be beyond the budget. So the other way to solve this is to break up the channel into two link segments using a retimer. And a retimer will basically uh, give you two separate electrical link segments, uh, each of which having a uh, loss that's much below the 36 dB loss budget. And this will give you a lot more margin compared to that 36 dB budget and you'll be able to operate with a lower bit error rate. So what is a retimer? Um, it's basically a mixed signal analog and digital device. It's designed to take in a signal, equalize that, recover the clock, recover the data, and retransmit that data with a clean clock. Retimers are fully defined in the PCI Express base specification, section 4.3, and they are required to meet all of the re receiver and transmitter electrical specifications, plus implement some protocol features as well. They need to implement the receiver equalization process, phases two and three, to automatically train the link partner transmitter preset settings. They also need to participate in receiver margining so that you can read out the eye height and eye width from a retimer device. And retimers are also required to implement the no equalization needed and equalization bypass to highest rate enhanced link behavior capabilities. Finally, retimers also reset the lane-to-lane uh, DSKU, -lane uh, which is mismatches in physical routing on the board. So this will allow you to drive another 36 dB um, without having SKU uh, accumulate and uh, degrade your link performance. So some of the key benefits of retimers include the fact that it's fully standardized. Uh, section 4.3 of the PCIe base specification lists out all of the electrical and protocol requirements of a retimer. PCI SIG has also defined a test specification for retimers. And besides that, there are some efforts uh, beyond PCI SIG to even standardize the footprint of retimer uh, form factors for by 16 by 8 and by 4 Retimers also support an open slot system design, which means you can plug in any adding card to any slot and the link would work. And retimers can do this because they reset the jitter budget, reset the loss budget, so they're effectively providing a very clean signal to the adding card, uh, such that the adding card thinks that it's talking directly to the CPU. So as far as implementation tips go, um, I really like to think of retimers as providing system designers some peace of mind. You know, rather than operating your entire system of hundreds of PCIe links, some of which may be operating right on the edge of 36 dB and running into some bit error rate issues, um, I think it's wise to take your longest links, insert a retimer, and basically cut those links in half to allow them to operate at a much lower insertion loss. Um, so operating around 20 dB versus 
36 or 40 or 50 is really going to improve your bit error rate performance, your eye margins, and it will improve the performance of your system overall. And another tip is to take advantage of some of the diagnostic capabilities that retimers provide to a system. Many retimer devices have a sideband I2C or SM bus port, which would allow the BMC to read information about unexpected entries to recovery or just overall link health um, in terms of eye height and eye width. And then there's of course the in-band PCI Express uh, messaging, which allows you to do receiver margining um, and read retimer registers, which really provide for a, a full set of diagnostic features. So what do you look for in a retimer? Um, I like to often put myself in the shoes of a system designer. And so first and foremost, you wanna look for compliance. Compliance in terms of meeting the receiver and transmitter electrical specifications, plus all of the protocol specifications that would be tested at a PCI SIG PlugFest event. That's really table stakes. On top of that, uh, you wanna look for latency, especially with PCI Express Gen 5 um, and some of the emerging applications for heterogeneous compute, uh, distributed AI and cache coherent applications, latency between the root complex and endpoint is really critical. So you want to make sure the retimer has very low latency. You also want to make sure the retimer is a small footprint. Um, one of the things uh, to look for is that um, these di devices are going into very densely packed systems. And so you want a device which has a fairly small footprint and rectangular aspect ratio. For example, this is a by 16 retimer. It has a rectangular aspect ratio, which makes it easier to fit next to a PCI Express chem connector. And you also want to make sure that um, in addition to the small footprint, it requires very little additional components that go around it uh, to make the overall total footprint um, very small and, and not uh, impact the system design very much. You want to look for low power consumption because that affects your regulator and your thermal design. You also want to make sure that the bifurcation features are there to be able to bifurcate a BI-16 link into smaller sublinks. And then of course, diagnostic features are always key. Having the sideband and in-band monitoring capabilities will make the BMC engineer uh, very happy. So thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be posting more information about retimers in the future. And please go ahead and get started designing your PCIe 5 systems with PCI Express retimers.